the victories you won. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor John Pope from Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, and we want to welcome you to the worship hour. Another opportunity has come for us to lift up the name of Jesus. And today, one of the things that we're doing is we want to celebrate the fact that Jesus lives, but not only that he lives, but that he is also the Lord of our lives. So as we get ready to worship God, we say, come on, Holy Spirit, have your way. Come on, Holy Spirit, have your way. We pray that God will bless you on today. So come on, everybody. Let's go to church. shall bow, every tongue confess that you are, you are Lord. Oh, at the mention of your name, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that you are, you are Lord.
praise him, let's praise him, let's praise him. Jesus will fight your battle. The Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 26 through 29. The Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 26 through 29. And when you have it, would you signify by saying amen? Amen. And it says this. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hand. And reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. <clears throat> Thomas said, my Lord and my God. I'd like to speak with you this morning from this simple topic. Jesus lives. And he is Lord. I said, Jesus lives. And he is Lord. My Lord and my God.
bow for a word of prayer. Father, I just want to give your name the glory this morning. I want to give your name the honor. I thank you for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit this morning. Lord God, I thank you for the many blessings you've already bestowed upon us. God, I pray that you would take us higher in your word, oh God. Dear Heavenly Father, so that we will continue to look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Speak now, Holy Spirit. And as you speak, give us all ears to hear and a heart to receive and a mind to do what thus saith the Lord. These and many of the things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. 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 There is a hallelujah in the house today. There is a hallelujah in the house of God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Too many times we want to wait to the end of the sermon to get happy. Hallelujah. But ain't no reason we can't be happy at the beginning of the sermon. Ain't no reason we can't be happy in the middle of the sermon. Ain't no reason that we have to stop praising God. that I find interesting is what normally happens in the church after Resurrection Sunday. I'm going to try to stand behind the pulpit today. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. But if all of a sudden your pastor takes off out the pulpit and has to run around the church don't think that I've lost my mind. Just don't stick your foot out and try to trip me. Because I believe the Holy Ghost will elevate me right over your foot. Because he lives. I know, I know, I know, I know that he lives. Hallelujah. See, sometimes after Easter, it seems like the joy will go right out of the church. Because we, we, we celebrate and we say Resurrection Sunday is such a, a, a special Sunday to us. Mm-hmm. It seems like a special Sunday because all of a sudden we have all of these people that show up on Resurrection Sunday. Come on. But less than seven or eight days later, everybody goes back to their respective place. And then they begin to do their own thing. Mm-hmm. Life begins to happen to the people all over again. And it seems like they just need to put Jesus away to the next major holiday. They said Resurrection Sunday has occurred. I got at least three weeks off for Mother's Day. And then I'll be back around to visit the church. But saints, one of the things that God would have us to do is not just focus on Resurrection Sunday. You see, God wants us to celebrate the resurrection. God wants us to celebrate the blessing that we have received in Jesus Christ every week of the year. Every day of the year. Every moment, every hour, we have an opportunity to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the blessings Mm -hmm. that resurrection brought to each and every one of us. You know, when we started looking a few weeks ago, as we got closer to Easter, 
We said that we were going to purpose in our hearts that we were going to walk. We're going to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. And as we began to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, we, we started walking with him on Palm Sunday as Jesus made his way into Jerusalem on a donkey. And then we walked with Jesus down the Via Dolorosa, that way of suffering as our God made his way to Golgotha's Hill, the place of the skull. We were there with him when they nailed his hands and nailed his feet to the cross. We were there with him when they raised him up and dropped him in the hole. We were there with him as the Lord gave up the ghost and commended his spirit to the Father. We went with Jesus to the empty tomb. And then after the empty tomb, we got up early on Sunday morning. And as we got up early on Sunday morning, we began to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then throughout the day, we celebrated the resurrection of Christ. We looked at the cross and, and we, we, we put some of our issues on the cross because we wanted to celebrate the resurrection. But after Resurrection Sunday, after the benediction, what did we do? Did we decide that we were going to walk away from Jesus? Did we decide that we were just going to leave and say, well, happy Resurrection Day, y'all. The Lord says, let's walk with Jesus a little while longer. Let, 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 let's walk in his footsteps just a little while longer. Because if we keep walking in the footsteps of Jesus, we're just going to walk with him through this first week after the resurrection. And as we walk with him in this first week after the resurrection, we'll see all kinds of signs and, and all kinds of things that help us to realize that Jesus got up on that Sunday morning. To help us realize that Jesus is alive and that he is Lord. Because when we walk with him and we started on that resurrection Sunday, we see that there were some women that went to the tomb where Jesus was laid. And as they, after the women went to the tomb, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. He let her know that he was alive. And as some of the women were on their way to the disciples to, to tell them that Jesus was alive, Jesus showed up and he appeared to the women and they worshipped him and they grabbed hold of him and they ran to Galilee to tell the disciples that Jesus was alive. And then we find that Jesus appeared to Peter on that Sunday afternoon. Right about the time y'all got out of Golden Corral. <laughs> he appeared to he appeared to Peter. And then later on in the day, just when Golden Corral was setting in and you were falling asleep in the chair. The Lord was walking down the road to Emmaus. Walking from Jerusalem. To that little village of Emmaus with two of the disciples. He had a conversation and had a little dinner with them. And he gave them revelation and opened up their eyes. And then later on in the evening, as those disciples went back to Galilee, that Jesus appeared to the ten. The ten disciples would have been eleven, but a man named Thomas, we sometimes call him Didymus, depends on whether you're referring to his Hebrew name or his Greek name. Thomas was missing from the crew. And as the disciples were in the room and they were shut up, the door was shut, they were in the room, Jesus suddenly appeared in the room. And when Jesus appeared in the room, he 
empowered the disciples and commissioned them to go and share the good news. Jesus was busy on that resurrection Sunday. But Thomas was missing. He didn't see Jesus. And Thomas had a crisis of faith when he hears that Jesus is alive. He wholeheartedly rejects the news. Thomas had that crisis of faith like some of us sometimes have a crisis of faith. We have that crisis of faith and we begin to wonder, really, is Jesus alive? Really? Is he alive? We walk through that crisis of faith and what God wants us to do is to be able to understand why we end up with a crisis of faith at times and how we can overcome that crisis of faith. Mm -hmm. There's some things that are contributors to our disbelief. Mm -hmm. In the middle of our crisis, one of the contributors to our disbelief is a lack of presence with the Lord. You see, Thomas wasn't present when Jesus appeared to the other disciples. And because he wasn't present, he was not able to experience the full blessings that the Lord had imparted to the other ten. See, the blessings were already designed for him as well, but because he wasn't present, he couldn't get the blessings. My brothers and my sisters, there are many people who are not present. And because they are not present, they can't get the full experience with Christ because they're not present with the Lord. They're either not present physically or they're not present spiritually. Today, because of COVID, we have our churches where a number of people are not present physically. They're choosing to miss out on the fellowship and they say, you know what I'll do? I'll just join the church on Facebook. I'll just join the church on YouTube. I'll just join the church on Gospel of America Network. Thank God for all of those venues, but there's nothing like being in the presence. Some folks will tell you I've been to five services today. I've been all over the place. I, I done had a good time watching from afar. But I want to tell you, there's a difference in the experience of worship when you're in the house and when you're sitting back watching on television. There's a difference. The Holy Ghost makes a difference when you're in the house. Hallelujah. And see, because if you're in the house, I can turn this microphone on and the folks on digital network may not hear me, but the folks in the house are still shouting because they can still hear me. There's a difference when you're in the house. See, when you're right in the middle of it, when you're right in the middle of it, you're in the thick of it. You know, my uncle used to love to watch baseball. And I used to say, I don't understand why in the world he loved that game so much. I'd be sitting there and I'd be about to go to sleep because they done struck out 20 people and nobody got on base. Now I'm like, Lord, this game is so slow. But one day I happened to go to the game. And oh, when I got to the game, the atmosphere was different. The people were shouting. The people were cheering. I could see the strategy going on in the game. And boy, did I have a good time at that baseball game. It's different when you, when you got the presence going on. See, the psalmist said in Psalm 133 and 1, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. You know how it is. You start singing and you hear the person singing next to you and you want to start singing. You hear the hand claps and you want to start clapping. You see folks jump up and start shouting and you want to start shouting. The Holy Ghost moves from heart to heart and breast to breast and boy when it gets around to you. You in the presence with like-minded 
mad people. You come in the house mad. <laughs> and you come in the house full of whatever it is that you came in the house with. But when you come in and, and you hear somebody say it's time for a release and it's time for a release and you make up your mind that you're going to release that stuff. Whatever it is, you make up in your mind that you're going to release and when you release, the Holy Ghost will hit you. And when the Holy Ghost hit you, next thing you know, you standing up there crying. Why in the world am I crying? You standing up there shouting, I don't do this. You standing up there, your feet get the moving. I don't do this. What's going on? You in the presence. You in the presence. You can't sometimes, you can't help yourself when you in the presence. You can't help yourself when you in the presence. But there's a second contributor to unbelief or disbelief. And the second contributor is a natural mindset. You see, even though the ten disciples and the brethren that walked with Jesus on the road to Emmaus and the women who saw Jesus shared their accounts with uh, Thomas about Jesus living. Thomas said, I ain't believing it. I, ain't, I don't believe that. I don't care what y'all say. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to believe it. All Thomas did in his disbelief is validate what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, when the Lord says, Behold, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for, the, for they are foolishness unto him. And neither can he know him, for they are spiritually discerned. See, sometimes we have a hard time with this thing about Jesus living. Sometimes we have a hard time with this thing about worshiping and praising God with all our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. Sometimes we have a hard time, but let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, if you're having a hard time, just sit back for a minute. Just, 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 just sit down for a minute. If you're having a hard time, just sit down in your place for a minute and say, Lord, help me. <laughs> Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Lord, help me to get out of myself. Hallelujah. Lord, God, help me to think on the things of heaven and not on the things of the earth. Hallelujah. Lord, reveal yourself to me. Hallelujah. Lord, come into this vessel. Hallelujah. Lord, sanctify this temple. Hallelujah. You call on the name of the Lord long enough. You call on the name with your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. Watch God change your attitude. What God change your idea? What God change your perspective? Lord, help me. And if you call on the Lord in spirit and in truth, I know that God will help you because without the aid of the Holy Spirit, you done heard me say this before, without the aid of the Holy Spirit, it's too hard for us to comprehend the things of the spiritual realm. We walk around in the natural realm and with our natural mind. See, the natural mind says, if I can't see it, if I can't smell it, if I can't touch it, if I can't taste it, if I can't feel it, no, no, it ain't real. If I can't understand it with this gray matter between my ears, I, it, it, it just can't be real. Hallelujah. Well, I want to tell you something. Everything you may not understand, everything you may not be able to feel, see, touch, smell, or hear, but I want you to know that it is real. Because the Bible says that in the beginning God created the heaven and earth. I didn't see it. But I'm walking on it. The Bible says that it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. I can't see him. I can't see him working right now. Wait a minute. Boom, 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 boom. I know that my heart beats, so I know that it's real. Hallelujah. When I send my prayers up to heaven and I say, God, I need you right now. I can't see the prayers as they're going up, but I can feel it deep down in my soul. I know that it's real. I may not be able to understand.
it in my natural man. But in my spiritual man, I can understand it. I wasn't there when they raised Jesus, when Jesus was resurrected from the dead, but I believe it. I believe it because my Lord said that he was going to get up from the dead. I believe it because Isaiah 53 said by his stripes we are healed. I believe it because Paul tells me that he saw Jesus, that 500 saw Jesus, that Peter saw Jesus, that the women saw Jesus. I believe it. And as I believe it, I know that it's real. I believe it because I know that if he got up, he's going to one day bless us all who are believers with the opportunity to be able to get to heaven. I believe it because one day I'm going to see my God in glory. One day I'm going to walk the streets of gold. One day I'm going to be in the heavenly choir. One day I'm going to be around the throne of grace. One day. I believe it. 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 Jesus lived. Jesus lives. I said he lives. I said he lives. I said he lives. I said he lives. See, when we walk around in the natural mind, it's hard for us to understand that what God said is true. When we walk around in the natural mind, we get afraid when somebody's sick and they ask us to come and pray for them. We get afraid that the Lord won't work through us and that we won't be able to lay hands on the sick and the sick get well. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you something. Ain't no need to be afraid because if I'm laying hands on somebody and I'm praying for them, it's not me that's healing, but it's God that's healing. All I got to do is trust that God's going to do what God's going to do. I don't know how he's going to do it. Hallelujah. I just believe that he's going to do it. People don't believe in miracles today, but I believe in miracles. I, I believe in miracles. Hallelujah. I believe, I believe, I believe that God is able. Amen. Let me tell you a miracle that he gave us. One miracle that God gave us was doctors. Hallelujah. He gave them wisdom. He gave them knowledge and he gave them understanding. Another miracle that God gave us was medicine. Hallelujah. He's taken us from the individual roots and all these other things that people used to do. And now we got a little pill or a shot or whatever the case may be. And God can use whatever God wants to use. Hallelujah. God, I need your healing. Oh, go get a shot. Thank you, God, for the healing. God, I need your healing. Go talk to the doctor. Oh, God, thank you for the healing. God, I need a healing. Go down to the pharmacy and get your medicine. Thank you for the healing. Oh, God, I need a healing. Boom! Touch you with my hand. Thank you, God, for the healing. I believe in the miracle working power of God. I believe in it. I believe in it. I believe that my God will deliver us from trials and tribulations. Amen. I believe that he will. I'm going to tell you why I believe it. Watch me pray. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to pray, I'm not going to wear it. If I'm going to wear it, ain't no need to pray. Hallelujah. Trust God and believe. Don't be double-minded. Caught between two opinions. Believe and trust in the Lord with all your heart. And watch God do something amazing for you. Reverend Sinet says it time after time after time. Trust in the Lord. <laughs> put him to the test. Put him, put him to the test. Put him to the test. Put him to the test. And I want you to know that God will not fail you. Your God will not fail you. We believe that God is able. Not only do we believe that he's able, we believe that God sees all things. God sees all things. Trouble in my way. I have to cry. What? Did it say all the time? What that? What did it say? Did it say I have to cry when? Yeah, he didn't say you got to cry all the time. He said trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. But we also hear that weeping is going to endure for what? It's going to be for a night. But joy comes when? It's going to come in the morning. Somebody, it's time for you to start walking in your morning. It's time for you to believe God is delivering. It's time for you to believe that God is healing. It's time for you to believe that God is providing for your every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Not because
because of your degree, not because of your job, not because of your background, according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. <laughs> some of y'all walking, some of y'all just feel like you down in Daniel's lion's den. Somebody feel like they land you in the Daniel's lion's den. All you can see around you is the lions. All you can see around you is the issues. All you can see around you is the trouble. But I want to tell you something. The lions might be there, baby, but God will shut up their mouth so they can't touch you. Hallelujah. God's going to bring you out. But you got to believe. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't give up in the middle of the fight. Hallelujah. When you get knocked down, get back up. I heard somebody say the only time that a fighter really loses the fight is when they get down and they won't get back up. They done said, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. But you can fight the whole 15 rounds. Somebody keep on fighting. Put up your dude, somebody keep on fighting. Hallelujah. I don't care what's going on. You keep on fighting. Why? Because your Lord lives. Jesus is alive. I said, Jesus is alive. And what God will do is the Lord Jesus, he will help us to overcome our unbelief. He'll help you overcome your unbelief. If you're struggling with it, if you're in the midst of it now, Lord, I've been going through a long time, God. I don't know how I'm going to make it, God. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I need your help. I need your help right now. I need your help right now. See, unbelief will cause you to feel a certain way. Y'all know what I mean. It'll cause you to feel a certain way. Thomas, in his unbelief, he got angry. And that boy got arrogant. Yeah, he did. He got arrogant. Because when he heard the good news about Jesus Christ, Thomas said, listen here. Or if I would go back to my North Carolina, North Carolina vernacular, I would say, look at him. Look at him. I don't care what you say. Here's my condition. Let me read you Thomas' conditions. Thomas said, if I can't put my finger, if I can't put my finger in the nail prints in his hand, if I can't thrust my hand into his side, then I'm not going to believe. He said, I won't believe. He got arrogant. He got arrogant. He said, Jesus, you're going to you're gonna have to prove it to me. You're going to have to prove it to me. But we got people like that in the church today. They operate the same way. They hear the testimony about somebody being healed. That ain't real. They hear the testimony about somebody being blessed financially. I don't want to hear that. They hear the testimony about God is just going to elevate somebody. Now, I, and I know I don't want to hear that because, you know, they this and they that, right? They don't want to believe it because it didn't happen to them. Let me tell you, we got to learn to celebrate when somebody else gets a blessing. Instead of waiting for somebody to fall so we can say, I told you so. We got to learn to celebrate when somebody else gets a blessing. Because if you learn to celebrate when somebody else gets a blessing, your blessing is yet on the way. Hallelujah. 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 And we have to learn to pray for other people when they fall, right? Because when we fall, we want somebody praying for us. Amen. We don't want them talking about us, right? We don't want them putting us down. We don't want them looking down on us. We want them to lift us up in prayer. We want them to be our brother's keeper. See, we don't want to have that same type of spirit that Thomas had. Thomas said, I'm just going to doubt. I'm going to keep doubting. But when you have a close encounter with Jesus, <laughs> when you have a close encounter with Jesus, you can't continue to doubt. When you have a close encounter with Jesus, 
you'll change your natural mindset. Yeah, yeah. See, the Bible says eight days after the disciples yeah. first had an encounter with Jesus, mm -hmm. that the disciples were back in the place and they were shut up. Mm -hmm. But this time, Thomas was with them. And as Thomas was with them, the Bible says that Jesus came, the doors being shut. Mm -hmm. All right. Just like last time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you think you can keep Jesus out, but you can't keep Jesus out. Yeah. No. See, Jesus showed up, and when he showed up, it must have startled everybody because the first thing that Jesus said is, peace be unto you. Jesus, Jesus said, y'all calm down. I'm not a spirit. Y'all calm down. Y'all calm down. It's me. It's the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And when the Lord showed up, know what he did. When he showed up and said, peace be unto you, then he turned to Thomas. Thomas ain't said a word. He turned to Thomas. He said, reach your finger here. Re re reach your finger. You want to put me to the test? Reach your finger here and look at my hand. Reach your hand here and put it into my side. You want to put me to the test? Did nobody come in and tell Jesus anything? Jesus is omniscient. He knows all things. Jesus knew what Thomas wanted before Thomas said a word. Jesus knew because he's omniscient. The Bible says in Psalm 139 and 2, you know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts are far off. See, that's why it's important to knowing that the Lord knows our thoughts. It's important that we keep ourselves centered in the Lord. Because before we can say anything, the Lord already knows about it. Jesus came in and he responded to Thomas's challenge and he said, do you need any more proof? Do, 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 do you need any more proof? Well, Thomas, he, did, he wasn't stupid. He might have been crazy, but he wasn't stupid. <laughs> After Jesus showed up, came through the door, didn't open the door. After Jesus showed up, said, touch, touch. And nobody had already told him, Thomas fell down and said, my Lord and my God. Hallelujah. He said, my Lord and my God. I don't need any more proof. You are my Lord. You are my God. God, I don't need any more proof. But how many times have we said, Lord, if you get me out of this? Mm -mm. Lord, if you give me this out. And then, and then when God blesses you and answers your prayer, the question is, what do you do? Do you thank him or do you just turn and go back to your old way? But my prayer is that when God blesses you, that you say, hallelujah, thank you, God, for your greatness. Hallelujah, thank you, God, for your goodness. Hallelujah, thank you for all that you've done for me. But when you catch it, when you catch it, when you catch it, See, when Thomas said, my Lord and my God, Jesus kind of gave Thomas a little bit of a rebuke. Because Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. See, Jesus says that I don't want you to just have to have proof that I died on the cross yes, and got up. Yes, you can go on my word that I told you that I got, that I died and got up. You can also go on my word. And if, and if you go on my word, here's where you're going to get your blessing. 
Because Jesus not only died and got up, but the word of God said that when he got up, he got up and all power in heaven and in earth was given unto him. Now, I want you to catch this because if you believe that Jesus lives, if you believe that Jesus is Lord, here's the blessing that's in it for you. Somebody say, I want my blessing. Somebody say, I want my blessing. Well, let me tell you what the Lord will do for you. Because he has all power in heaven and in earth. If you believe that Jesus got up and now he has all power in heaven and in earth. The Lord has already triumphed over all sickness that can come your way. Call on the Lord and ask for your healing. If you believe that Jesus has all power in heaven and in earth, don't you know that Jesus has triumphed over all sin? Come to the Lord for your salvation. If you believe that Jesus has all power in heaven and in earth, don't you know that he's going to overcome all evil and wickedness? Hallelujah. Evil and wickedness may try to bombard your household. Hallelujah. May try to invade your family. Hallelujah. May try to interfere with your job opportunity. Hallelujah. Evil and wickedness may try to interfere with your worship. But Jesus, I said Jesus. Jesus, I said Jesus has all power in heaven and in earth. And because he has all power, you are going to win the victory. Because he has all Give a 
because I know there's more. Mm -hmm. And I pray that you want more yeah, of yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I pray that each of us wants more of him. Amen. Amen. God has so many giftings and anointings and yeah, anointed yeah, people in yeah, this house yeah. that he wants to use to do great things yeah, for his yeah, kingdom. Yeah, yeah. I said to do great things yeah. for his kingdom. Yeah. We don't live in the mediocre. Amen. Amen. We don't live just in the middle lane. I want God to put us in the God lane. I don't care about the fast lane. I want to be in the God lane. Amen. You know how you ride on the highway and you see those signs that say HOV4, right? You got HOV4 from 3.30 to 5.30 and you can't get in that lane unless you got four or five people. Well, I tell you what, I want God riding with me because I want to be in the God lane. Amen. All day long. All day long. I want to be in the God lane. And I want you to be in the God lane too. Because as we're moving in the God lane, I know that our God will bless us above and beyond this. Amen. I thank him. 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 Last thing, I want to tell somebody, and I don't know who this is. No matter what you're going through, I got to take you from the excitement of the sermon to the reality of the world. I know that somebody is going through a time of trial. I know you're going through time of tribulation. But I want you to hold on to this word that Jesus lives because if you can hold on to that word you can also hold on to the word that says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving to make your requests made known unto the Lord I know you're going through I know you're going through but don't let your arms hang down don't let your knees be feeble don't let your head hang down. Call on your God. Call on your God. For the help that you need. And trust that God will provide. Trust that he will provide. Because if you trust him, he will show you some amazing things. But you have to trust him. No matter what happens, no matter what happens. 
if you're driving down, if you're walking down the road, you say, I trust you, God, and a car drives by and splashes water on your feet. You say, God, it doesn't matter. That's a distraction. I still trust you. I still trust you. No matter what happens, I'm trusting you. That's the real talk right there. You got to trust him. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus, and we want to thank you for what our eyes have thank you, Lord. seen, thank you, Lord. our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt Amen. on today. Thank you, Lord. Lord God, help us to leave this place knowing that you are Lord. Help us to know that you live and that you will be there for us, dear Heavenly Father, but you want us to be there with you. Oh, God, we just ask your blessing over everyone under the sound of my voice. We pray to Heavenly Father that you would do some wonderful and marvelous things. Please, Lord, throw open the windows of heaven. Thank you, Lord. And pour out a blessing on them that they would not have room enough to receive. Thank you. God, in all things, we give you the glory. We give you the honor and the praise. Now, Lord, may the grace of Jesus, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with us all now and forevermore. And all God's children join in together and we sing. Praise the Lord. We had another wonderful time in service on today. You know, sometimes we forget that after Easter, we still celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We still celebrate the fact that he lives. And I am so thankful that God revealed himself through the power of his Holy Spirit yet one more time. We are able to worship God. We're able to lift up his name every day because our Savior lives. We are thankful that God gives us the opportunity to come before him and to worship him every day. We want to remember that, that Jesus lives. But we also want to remember that he is the Lord of our lives. You know, as we come together to celebrate, we would love to have the opportunity to celebrate with you. If you're ever here in San Angelo, Texas, we invite you to come and join us at Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, 721 West 19th Street. You can worship with us on Wednesday night at our Wednesday night Bible study at 6.15 p.m. on Sunday morning at our 9 a.m. Sunday school. Or, if you choose, you can join us in the worship hour at 10 a.m. We would love to have the opportunity to love on you. Our prayer is that God will bless you and that God will keep you. Until the next time, God bless. Victories you won.